Welcome to Solway Mushrooms for another video. This tech was created by 90 Second Mycology, uh, so go and check them out on social media. They are the masterminds behind this particular tech, and this is where it started for a lot of amateur mycologists and home growers, including myself. They are the masterminds behind this tech, and I take my hat off to them, and I hope I can do it some justice today for you. You can grow any cultivated mushrooms with these, or you can use it as a starter to get some grain spawn for any mushrooms. This would also be a very cheap and interesting project to do with your children at home. Please be responsible with what kind of mushrooms you grow with this tech. Please check your local laws as to what kind of mushrooms you can actually grow in your area first. With that being said, let's get straight into the video. Okay, so you're going to need masking gloves. You're going to need some paper towels or a rag to clean with. And you're also going to need some cleaning solution. I use bleach and ISO. 70% uh, ISO. We're also going to need a liquid culture syringe of our choice and a needle. Usually get these sterile needles with the liquid culture if you buy them. We're going to need some micropore tape. Please make sure it's got micropore written on it. I prefer the fabric tape. We're going to need an old needle or something sharp that you can heat up to melt through the packets. And we're going to need a lighter. Please be careful when using your lighter and you've got alcohol vapours in your still air box. ISO is extremely flammable, especially when it's a vapour. So please take care, we don't want burnt fingers or anything blowing up. And of course we need our grains, so we need some microwavable whole grain rice. We don't want any flavoured rice, just plain straight up whole grain rice. There should only be a couple of ingredients including sunflower oil. The sunflower oil is fine, so don't worry about that too much. Let's get straight to the tech. Having cleaned our still air box, we're going to start cleaning the front of our whole grain rice. If you want to know more about cleaning a still air box, then check out my intro to still air box video on YouTube. To clean these rice packets, I'm just using a rag that I've soaked in some alcohol, trying to keep the vapours down because I am going to be flame sterilising a needle shortly. We're going to break up our liquid culture syringe by giving it a shake. I'm using Linesman here, I've also inoculated some oyster mushroom bags. We need to pick up our sterile needle and we need to open that. Make sure you don't touch the plastic part of the needle that's going to go into the lure housing on the syringe because we don't want to put any contam on that that we might have on our hands. There's a little white lure stopper on this syringe to keep the contents nice and clean. We're going to just take that off and we're going to thread the needle into the syringe. I don't need to flame sterilise this because it's come straight out of the factory, it's been sterilised already so we don't need to worry about that for a first bag this is a clean sterile needle just breaking it up once more and i'm going to pick a point on the bag fairly low down i only want to inoculate this with one mil liquid culture when you're inoculating your rice please make sure you don't pierce right through the bag so it's just the tip that goes in you might find that the needle gets blocked that it's picked up a piece of rice especially if you've got a, a wide gauge needle Make sure you don't exert too much pressure because if we put too much liquid culture in this it could provide an unfavourable environment and might bring on some contam as well inside the bag. So you saw there I tore off some micropore tape and I've just placed it over the injection site. This helps to reduce any contam and to reduce any particles that are going to try and make their way into the bag. Any competing yeasts, moulds or fungi. This needle's no longer sterile because we've injected it into a packet of rice so you can see now I'm flame sterilising this needle. I'm going to do that until it's red hot. You want to allow that to cool slightly, just for a fraction of a second. And then we're going to inoculate the second bag. Again, we're going to pick a spot low down. We're going to make sure we put one mil in of liquid culture. And we're not going to pierce all the way through the bag either. Once that's done, we're going to put a cap on the needle. Thankfully, I've never stabbed myself when working in a still air box, but you, could, you can see it's very restrictive and it's very clumsy to work in. So I'm taking some more micropore tape and I'm just going to cover the, the site for the second bag where we inoculated it. Next, we're going to prep for our fresh air exchange holes that we're going to stick on the top of the bag. Uh, mushrooms need fresh air exchange, just like us. They breathe out carbon dioxide and they breathe in air. So going to take our needle or other sharp pointy instrument that we can heat up and we're going to pinch the bag we're going to warm the needle up to a point where it'll easily pierce through and melt the plastic i'm just using the lighter again for that and we're going to pierce from one end of the pinch right through to the other you can also elongate the hole a bit as i'm doing there 
Once we've done that, make sure you put your cap on your needle. We don't want any stabbings again. And we're going to grab some micropore tape. I'm going to cover the two holes. It's really important we do this. Um, otherwise, you'll find when your mushrooms are colonizing those grains, you'll find that the bags are going to balloon. There's going to be a lot of pressure on them. And it may also stall out the grains from colonizing properly. Mushrooms really like a high carbon dioxide environment for colonizing but they do need some fresh air exchange. So you've got to play the numbers game with this tech. You can see me demonstrating here with two packets, but in the past I've done six packets. There are better grains to work with, but that would require a pressure can or a pressure cooker to sterilize them. It would require mushroom bags, or it could require jars to, to make your grain in. That's what the beauty of this tech is. It's so simple and it can be done for so cheap. You can pick this rice up from any supermarket, any grocery store, and you can get a liquid culture syringe for around eight pounds over here in Britain. Ten dollars, I imagine, over, over the pond. So it is a really cheap tech. And you can use these as grain spawn packets. You can scale them up. You can also fruit mushrooms directly from the packets. You won't get the biggest clusters in the world. It's not the best substrate for them, but neither is straight grains either if you were using millet or rye or something like that. But they will fruit. Mycelium is extremely adaptable. It's very tenacious. So we've got breathing holes and that's it. Let's move on to labeling up. Once we finish inoculating, we're gonna mark our bags up with, uh, with the species and the date. This is a really good idea. So you know how long it's been until it's fully colonized. Just so you've got an idea of what you're looking out for when it's fully colonized, I'll show you now. We've got an uncolonized bag and a partially colonized bag. You can see the white mycelium. These are actually oysters. So that'll take around two weeks. You've got a little viewing window in the bags as well. So we're gonna lay them flat so we can spread out some moisture. We inoculate it at 20 to 24 degrees Celsius for two weeks. Thank you for watching, really appreciate it. If this helped you, give me a like and subscribe. I'll see you again next time.